You're watching Kenosha Community Television. Welcome to the Expo 2015. We're gonna walk around and talk to many of the booths. Hi, we're here at the Expo, one of the booths, and I'd like to find out about your booth, what organization you're with, who you are, and what, sure. what it's all about. Sure. Um, my name is uh, Kevin Muse. I work for the Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission, or Sewer PAC, SCWRPC, and uh, we're the regional planning agency for uh, all the seven southeastern Wisconsin counties, including Kenosha County and Racine County. Um, and we're here today to talk about Vision 2050, um, which is um, our next regional plan. So looking all the way out until 2050 to 050, um, looking at transportation and land use and what the region's transportation should look like, how we should develop into the future of the region, what areas should be preserved, what should be developed, those sorts of things. Um, so we're just here to have conversations with the public about what they think about those things. Um, we've also got a few other things. Um, we do the uh, economic development for Kenosha County, so we're here for that reason as well. So, How can people find out more about that? Um, sure. Uh, obviously, they can visit our booth here, but otherwise, um, we have a website, scwrpc.org, or vision2050sewis, so vision2050sewis.org, for the, uh, the next regional plan. So. Uh, is there anything in Kenosha County I should know about that you have a vision about I might not know about? <laughs> Well, uh, I think you'll know about most things because the highway reconstruction, the big one, 94, is already happening. Um, so that won't, nothing will be added to that in the next, you know, 30 years or so here. Um, the big thing uh, for Kenosha, it would be thinking about transit um, in, in this future plan, including things like the Kenosha Racine Milwaukee commuter rail, um, enhanced bus service in the city and, and in the surrounding areas of the city, um, further uh, transit service in western Kenosha County, those sorts of things. So that would be the big deal. And then, of course, with all the development happening in Kenosha County, um, it would be uh, how should that development happen and, and where should it go? So. Okay, well, thank you very much for talking to us today. We're at the Wibbick booth, and we'd like to find out what that means and what they do. Can you tell us a little about that? Yes. Hi, I'm Catherine Marks, and I'm with Wibbick, Wisconsin Women Business Initiative, and we are a nonprofit economic development corporation helping people who want to start their own small business or helping those who are already in existing business grow and expand. And how we do that is through business education. We have a lot of wonderful classes that we offer. Even uh, uh, particularly that we recommend is a business plan class. So if you're out there and you want to know how to start your business, uh, but you don't have a business plan, Wibbick has a wonderful business plan class for individuals to take. And even if you're an existing business, you, if you haven't done a business plan, it's a wonderful um, resource and a tool. It's your guideline. It's your blueprint for taking your business to the next level. We also provide financial education, financial st stability, um, budgeting, savings, road to credit um, repair, and we also are micro lender, 1,000 up to $100,000, and in some cases up to $200,000. So we're here to help each and every one who wants to go into business or who's in existing business grow and expand. Where's your office located and where the classes are? Okay, uh, Wibbick actually, I should say, is a statewide organization. We are headquarters in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Been there for over 28 years. And we're located in Racine and Kenosha. We have offices. We're in Kenosha, which 652nd Street. We actually are in the same office with the Kenosha Chamber of Commerce, the sponsors for today's event. And we also have our office in Racine, um, 225, 245 uh, Main Street. Um, in downtown Racine. We also have an office in Madison. And you have a website where people can find out more about you? Yes, you can find us on our website at www.bic.com. It's wibic.com. Call Kenosha office at 262-925-2843 is my number there. Is there a calendar of your classes on the website? Oh, yes. Please go to our calendar and you'll see where if you want to take a class, just click on the tab for take a class. It'll take you to the calendars for all of our classes. We have um, in-classroom classes, we have online, and we have on-demand classes, too, that if you're not able to make the timelines that the classes that are on the schedule, you can also just make a request and have a special pre-recorded classes um, um, at your disposal. Okay, and so you, if you want to apply for a Wibbick loan, there's a tab for clicking on uh, applying for a loan. But I encourage everyone to go out there to our website and check us out, wwbic.com. Thank you very much.
And we're talking to the Athletic Republic representative. Could you tell us your name and what you do and a little about the Athletic Republic and what you're going to demonstrate a little later? Sure. My name is John Palman, uh, owner-operator of Athletic Republic, and what we do is performance sports training. Um, for those of you that don't know what performance sports training is, it's speed, agility, strength. Uh, we help athletes of all ages um, be healthier and quicker, faster, stronger, more flexible. Um, we also do a little bit of nutrition, uh, help people eat healthier, make better decisions. Um, so we try to tie it all together to create a healthier lifestyle for people. Today uh, we're going to be doing a demonstration uh, to show people some of the things we do, some circuits, uh, some strength and conditioning circuits. Very good. And where are you located? Just Sure. Yeah, Athletic Republic is located on 4211 Green Bay Road. It's on the north side of Kenosha. Uh, if you know where Monkey Joe's is, we're right behind uh, that business in a big blue building. Okay. And do you have a website? Uh, yes, we do have a website. It's palmansports.com. Palmansports.com. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. We're here at the Expo again this year, and Lou's going to tell us a little bit about it. Well, this is our 23rd annual Expo. We have about 140 vendors here, including the health fair, family activity area, of course, all the business vendors that we have. And let, yesterday we had 2,500 people. We hope to have 2,500 to 3,000 today. And, and come on down. It's a great event. You, have, uh, you can get a good deal on services for your house get your health um, um, surveys and tests done at no cost. There's a lot of free things going on, including a carotid artery screen, blood pressure checks, uh, hearing checks, all sorts of good stuff. Okay. How long do you uh, spend planning this? How, when do you start planning the next year's one? Well, we'll start with our committee right away after this to do a, uh, probably in April, to do a little post-expo analysis and survey. And then you know, come July or, or August, we have our first committee meetings on a regular basis uh, all the way through Expo next year, which will be again in March of 2016. How many of the booths are like repeat booths and how many are new this year, do you know? Well, we probably have about 15% of new booths and the rest of them are booths that have been here before. Uh, we like to have uh, uh, new businesses. We have uh, this uh, a lot of home services businesses today w where you can get deals on siding or windows. Some of them are new. We have some retail vendors here today. We have Jeff the Sheet Man that had really a phenomenal day yesterday and I guess he's going to do good stuff today too. So just some good good things going on. We have demonstrations throughout the day on home improvement techniques. Um, we have a, uh, a, one of the karate schools having a demonstration later. So lots of good uh, fun things to do here at Expo. I heard there's a lot of health demonstrations, like they're going to test how you, how your carotid artery is today. Right. Yeah. Those those screenings go on. The folks at uh, uh, United Health uh, Systems, or United Hospital Systems, excuse me, have been really uh, good at doing those carotid artery screenings for the public. So uh, we also have uh, food vendors. We got Soul Delicious. Uh, we have Manja's uh, Wine Bar, Sodexo, and Francine's Catering offering a variety of different menu choices, including healthy choices. Okay, well, thank you for talking well, to thanks, us. thanks, Carol. Good to see you here again, and we appreciate our partnership with Kenosha Community Media. Okay. Hi, we found one more booth here, and can you tell us your name and a little bit about your booth? It looks like you represent many things here. We really do. My name is Sherry Wistrom, and I'm here to represent the arts in Kenosha. We are here representing all the different galleries and all of the different venues that Kenosha offers. We have been kind of underground. I think a lot of people don't know how many wonderful things we have here in Kenosha. We'd love people to come out and learn all about us. We have brochures talking about a whole lot of different things, groups that put on performances, galleries that sell people's work, organizations that go ahead and promote the arts. We're very, very lucky to be here today, and I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. Can you name some of the organizations? I see lots of signs here. Yes, of course, I'm representing Lemon Street Gallery. That's my absolute favorite, but we're also representing Kenosha Art Association. We're the Muses. Um, we have galleries like Cbex, the Road Center. Uh, we have Mosquito Gallery. We have the Symphony and any kind of musical organizations like that. We're just all kind of under one big roof. And I see you have some demonstrations going on today. What's happening over there? We have Agnes, and she is doing her paint and sip, 
where uh, she goes ahead and gets people together. She provides all of the material and people paint a picture together. So she is showing her work today. We have some silken wool that has been fused that's available at Lemon Street Gallery. We have Margaret Heller here today showing the long arm quilting machine and demonstrating the wonders of doing long arm quilting. I know we have a new Kenosha Performing Arts Association in Kenosha called Fusion. Do you know anything yes. about that? Fusion is an absolutely wonderful thing. And um, there are galleries that they go ahead and set up. It's just such a live and wonderful venue. I would encourage anyone to come out and support that. Do you have a website for your whole overall organization or just individual? We have individual websites, which is a problem. Um, we talked to a venue yesterday that came through with their cards to see if we could go ahead and get something done. So all you'd have to do is go to one central location. I think that that would help immensely in being able to get that message out. But it's something that we have to work on. Of course, it takes money. Something that is not always in a real good supply. Maybe a Facebook page would be easier first. We have Facebook pages from individual galleries, but again, there's, they are not linked, which okay. something to work on. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for representing all these beautiful art organizations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hi, now we're visiting the Danish Brotherhood Lodge 14, and we'd like to find out more about that. Hi, uh, we're here for our second year. Um, we came last year and we had such a tremendous positive response um, so many people came up and, and surprisingly said, we didn't even know you were still around. So uh, we're, we're here to put our word out to make sure that we're not the best kept secret in town anymore. And we've just been having a ball. People have been coming by, getting our material. We had uh, three new members join yesterday um, for our lodge. So we're, we're excited to be here. And what kind of activities do you guys do? We have all kinds of stuff. We have a lot of ethnic activities. Um, our biggest is probably our two breakfasts, one in uh, the spring and one in the fall, our Ablis Giva and Medistapults. And we're also raffling off some of those breakfasts. Um, we also have uh, our various events, um, our anniversary dinner. We have our, our picnic in the summer for our families and that. We have a wonderful children's Christmas party um, in early December and then our adult Christmas party later. Um, many community activities. We donate to a lot of organizations in town here. So um, we're, we're very much a part of this community and we have been for well over 100 years. And where are you located? Do you have a website? We have a website. The website is currently being updated. So anybody going there, please be patient with us. That's danishbrotherhood.us. Um, and uh, our address is 2206 63rd Street. So we're in the heart of, down, or heart of uptown. And our building has been there since 1910, so we have certainly been a fixture. That whole area at one point was the Danish community in Kenosha. How many people are in your organization? Uh, we're currently running right around um, 300 members, and that makes us uh, literally the largest Danish Brotherhood Lodge in the world. Uh, we are one of the few that own our own building. You know, many of others you now rent facilities or, or meet in churches or, or what have you, but... Um, we're, uh, we're going strong. We're, we're getting better and better each year. So is everybody a Danish that joins? Or what? Not everybody. Uh, we have a lot of people that are, are related to Danes or friends of Danes. Um, you don't have to be Danish to be in our lodge, but we, we do encourage everyone to participate in, in all our Danish activities and, and promote the lodge. And then, of course, we also have our, our hall and our basement bar, which is called the Raskeller. They're all both available for rentals for parties, uh, birthdays, corporate events, weddings, you name it. Um, so we have a lot there, and um, we're, we're just happy to be a part of Kenosha and happy to be here. Thank you very much for talking to us. You're quite welcome. I've heard the Danish Lodge has in-house catering, so we're going to find out a little bit about that. Hi, my name is Al Salozzi. I'm with LNA Adventures, catering by Louis Nell Salozzi. We've been with the Danish for four years now. We do all the parties and we do as many of the outside parties as we can. We have a full menu, we do plate and or a buffet. So do you do specific Danish food for them? Once in a while we do, not often. They don't always ask for it. They like the pork. We've done the open face sandwiches once before. But well, we do whatever. We have a full menu. My son is our chef, Louis Aloza IV. He's our chef, then my husband and I run it. And it's a family, basically family ran business. Well, thank you for talking to us. Thank you.
Hi, we're here at the Sam's Club booth, who is a great supporter of uh, the Expo, so we'd like to find out a little about them and why they like to support it. <laughs> I am Greg. I'm the club manager at Sam's Club here in uh, Kenosha. And I uh, just want to thank the Chamber, first of all, for allowing us to sponsor the event here at uh, uh, Parkside. Um, and want to appreciate all the members out there that are part of Sam's Club. We look at this Expo as an opportunity for us to benefit uh, the small business here in town and uh, just want to say thank you to the community for having us and I think the expo is a great thing for us to have in the community it allows a small business to come in and really showcase everything that they have so thank you for having us and I appreciate the chamber well, and we're here at the Shalom Center booth and we're talking about the Shalom Center could you tell us about it <laughs> I sure will. Um, I'm Gail Gens, and I'm on the board of directors for the Shalom Center. And um, we have this booth this year because we're promoting our Cheesy Scarf project, which um, we're selling for $5 a piece. And we're trying to get uh, funds for, obviously, to run our programs and to uh, help the, the less fortunate people in our community. So I can tell you a little bit about Shalom and what we do. We uh, actually run four programs. We run the Emergency Family Shelter. We run the INS program. We run the Soup Kitchen. The INS program takes care of the homeless, and uh, the Emergency Family Shelter takes care of families who are in need, and we can take up to eight families at the present time. Our Soup Kitchen uh, feeds um, approximately 90 to 120 people a night, depending upon what it is. We do it 365 days a year. Um, and so that's a little bit about what we do and our programs. And um, I don't know what else I can well, tell you. Well, I know you're always looking for donations as well as volunteers. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We actually are, are very fortunate. We have about 700 people who volunteer for us uh, in more ways than one. and. Um, so we can always use volunteers. All you have to do is contact us. Our uh, telephone number is in the phone book, so you can give us a call, and we'll definitely help. Uh, use your, we can always use your help. Um, so uh, the volunteers are a huge part of, our obviously, our program. We also are in the process of uh, building a new building, and uh, that, that will be coming down the pike. In the near future, we're putting the plans together right now. We bought this old St. Vincent de Paul building, and we're renovating that. And when we have that building available, we'll be able to take our INS clients, who now leave at 7 o'clock in the morning, and uh, be able to house them 24 hours a day. Okay. So they'll have a place to put their belongings, they'll have a place to take a shower, they'll have a place to live, use as an address for job searches, um, and we'll be able to work with them in our different programs so that we get them back into the community. Our goal is to have them back out uh, and find them a place to live within 90 days. And we're kind of successful at that right now, even though we don't have them 24 hours a day. So. So if people want to donate food, where do they take that? Um, food donations are taken at our food pantry, and that's located on South Sheridan Road. Um, I don't actually have the street address. We have a sign out. It's between 80th and 85th Street uh, on South Sheridan Road. So, yes. So And just give us a call again, and uh, we will definitely take any any donations that people have. So. And you have a website or Facebook page? We do have a website, shalomcenter.org. So uh, yes, and we and all of our we have phone numbers out there and uh, ways for people to get a hold of us. Okay. Well, thank you for talking to us. Oh, thank you. Enjoying a little time by the fire here at the expo this year, and we're going to find out more about the Boy Scouts. Good morning. My name is Harold Booker. I'm the uh, Scout Master for Troop 522 out of the Moose in Kenosha. Uh, I'm here with the Three Harbors Council, uh, trying to introduce some of the young men in our community to the Boy Scouts. Um, our program is set up for the youth from first grade all the way through to their 18th birthday. Uh, there's several levels of scouting. They start out as a tiger cub and they can work all the way through to get, earn their Eagle Scout. Our Eagle Scout program is set up for all of the scouts, although only about 3% of the scouts actually finish their Eagle Scout. Um, kids learn different skill sets that give them a variety of 
uh, real world experience from camping all the way to doing business meetings for communication. Um, there's just a lot of opportunity for them to get out into their uh, community and help. Uh, we do a lot of different things with the uh, Shalom Center where we uh, go around and collect food for the uh, needy. Um, we're constantly trying to do service projects through our Eagle projects. The young men need to uh, go out and solicit uh, community organizations that we can do uh, uh, upgrades for. Sometimes we'll build shelters, um, renew projects that have already been, been established. Uh, but like I said, overall, it's just a nice opportunity for the kids to help out their community and get a good overview of a lot of different jobs that are in the community that they may want to show interest later in their life. Uh, what area do you do operate in then, or how do people contact you? Well, we have uh, the Three Arbors Council is actually out of Milwaukee, and that encompasses all of the southeastern part of the state of Wisconsin. You could definitely get a hold of them there. Also, a gentleman named Jim Reeder is the person that's in charge of this area, uh, and you can contact the office. I'll put you in charge with him. Most of the Cub Scout packs are through the schools, and uh, they can contact either the PTA or they can contact the school office and they should be able to point them towards the, the right uh, cup master. Very good. Anything else you want to add? Uh, we are enjoying ourselves at the expo. We're always happy to be here and come out and take a look. There's a lot of cool things out here. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us. Sure. And, and uh, we're finding out about sailing right now. Could you tell us your name and what organization sure. you represent? Sure, my name is Andy Cross and uh, I'm a member of the Kenosha Yacht Club. And the Kenosha Yacht Club, a lot of people don't realize, is open to the public. And there's a wonderful restaurant, the, uh, the Breakwater Bar and Grill, that's uh, open, especially during the summer, is uh, the, one of the best uh, premier locations to eat, uh, eat lunch and dinner in Kenosha. It's the best location in town, right on the lake, and there's a patio overlooking the, uh, overlooking the harbor, and it's just wonderful. And we're very excited to have uh, an affiliation with the KCSC, that's the Kenosha Community Sailing Center, and they offer sailing lessons. And uh, they have youth programs and adult programs, and it's just a, a wonderful way to get out and enjoy the best thing about Kenosha, living right on Lake Michigan. So do you need any experience in sailing to take sailing lessons? None at all. They have a classroom portion, so you can learn uh, several hours of classroom uh, education. And then they have volunteers who take you out and teach you everything you need to know. So it is for beginners. And there's also an intermediate and an advanced lesson too, uh, class courses for that. But it starts out absolutely for beginners. And so you don't need a lick of experience. And there are volunteers who will take you out. And so it's very, very easy to get out and enjoy sailing on Lake Michigan for anybody. So is this boat here one of the boats they use? It is. This one is called a BIC. It's the same company that makes the pens, BIC. And it's an open boat like this. And this is one of the boats you learn on. And so if you can see on the, the photo in there on the, on the wall, it's uh, the harbor is nice because there's no wind or there's a, it doesn't get choppy and wavy. There's plenty of wind for the boats, but it doesn't get rough. It's not scary at all. And you can take these little boats with an instructor and learn how to use them in the harbor before you need to go out on the lake. You don't even have to go out on the lake if you don't want to. You can just stay right in the harbor where it's nice and calm and relaxing. And these are one of the boats you can learn on. And it's, there's very few moving parts. It's super easy and super fun and very safe. And it's great for kids and adults. Do they have different sizes of boats once you learn what to know what you're doing? Yes. This is one of the smaller ones, and then they get up to a little bit bigger, and then members will take you out on their big 30-foot sailboats. Uh, they're always happy to take you out on there. And so we have information here at our booth. Also, KenoshaYachtClub.com. People can get on the website or our Facebook page and ask questions, or just stop on down. There's always members at the, uh, at the Yacht Club who are uh, always happy to talk about sailing. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Hey, we're visiting the booth of Freedom's Lutheran Church, and we'd like to know who this is and tell us about your organization and what they do. My name's Kim Nicoline, and I'm the kin kindergarten teacher at Freedom's, and we have an early childhood program that has infant all the way through four-year-olds, and then we have kindergarten through eighth, so we can take care of all the kids, and we're Christ-centered. We have a choice program that parents are more than welcome to come to our school and learn more about. 
and we have a roundup for kindergarten actually in about two weeks on the 27th so that's coming up and exciting so that I get to see all the new faces that come into our school and then we also have Easter for kids where kids get to play games and have snacks and learn about Jesus and the resurrection so that's a little bit about our school and where are you located oh we're in um, I don't the 20th Street, so, yep. So you're right near the church? Yes, yes, thanks. Do you have a website or Facebook page or anything? We have a website and a Facebook page that you can go to and see pictures of our students and learn more about our school. We won uh, second place in our basketball tournament in our conference for the boys, and then we won consolation for the girls' basketball tournament. So it's an exciting time. So do you have to go to church there in order to go to school there? No, you don't have to. It's just a way to come into our school. You can learn more about the church if you'd like to. Um, some families have and some families are members now, but you don't have to be a part of the church in order to go to the school. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to find out what DMLA is and what they do. Could you t tell me your name and what you represent and about your organization? Hi, I'm Henry Hurset and I'm part of DMLA. We're part of Kenosha chapter in DMLA. And I'm the master counselor for my chapter, and basically, like, it's like the pre like the person that leads our Pacific chapter. But what Demolay is, it's a youth boys organization that teaches young men leadership skills and like how to work together. And it's really lots of fun. It's it's an organization run by the boys. Like we do all the planning and fundraising for all the fun events that we do, and we have dances and go to like fun places like Six Flags or Action Territory. But stuff that we plan that we raise the money for so we feel more accomplished afterwards then. It's lots of fun. So where do you meet? Well, there's different chapters throughout the state. Like I said, I'm in charge of Kenosha Chapter, which is a nice lodge on downtown Kenosha. Mm -hmm. So do you have a website or a Facebook page? Um, yes, we are. It's demolay.com, and I think we're, we're, we also have a website for Wisconsin DMLA. It's just Wisconsin DMLA. It has our information and future events on it. So how many people are involved in this area? In this area we have a nice chapter with about 10 boys in it. Okay. And you're always looking for more people? Yes, of course. We're always open to more people because the more is the merrier, of course. Yes. Okay. Are you enjoying being in the expo today? Yes, it's really lots of fun. And most, we're also making balloon animals for all the kids. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. We're at the officer friendly booth, and here's the friendly officer we found to talk to us. So could you tell us about the police department a little, the officer friendly, your safety uh, center and stuff? Yeah, the officer friendly program. Actually, my title is safety officer, but I go by officer friendly for the kids. Um, been doing officer friendly for about 24 years now, out of my 28 years on the department. And I work out of the uh, Kenosha Rotary Safety Center. Uh, it's a building owned by, obviously, the Rot Rotary Club. And they've owned it since 1981. And uh, the police department basically runs safety programs in there. Everything from uh, bus safety, pedestrian safety, bike safety, stranger danger, um, good touch, bad touch, uh, what to do if you find a gun. Uh, let's see what else we talk about. Oh, um, how not to get bit by dogs. We talk about stray animals, one of our newer programs. How do you not get bit by a dog? <laughs> well, I don't have a dog and I've never had a dog, so I actually had to watch the video the very first time before I would even present the program. I mean, I think a lot of people get bit because they do things that, they do it inadvertently that dogs don't expect. And dogs are just like people, they have feelings. And the simplest thing from petting a dog could be where they might get bit. And I guess from what we've seen in the video that a lot of dogs don't like to be petted on the head. And they say the first thing you should do is always ask the owner before you pet the dog. It's a good thing because they know how their dog is that day, what, do what their dog is experiencing that day. Uh, then after they give permission, what you kind of do is ball your hand up and then you put it out real slowly out in front of the dog's nose and let that dog get comfortable with you. Then you got to kind of figure out, is that dog comfortable enough? Have they calmed down? You know, is it just a sniffing or anything like that? And then once that, you're supposed to now pet them under the chin. Dogs that you're pretty much not around all the time, they say pet them under the chin or on their chest um, because they don't want to see that hand disappear over their head because they're going to look up and they might snap. 
So you just kind of pet under the chin. After you get used to them or the dog gets used to you, then I guess you can pet on the head. I guess even your own dog, they say, you know, you can pet on the head, but for newer dogs, they say approach it that way. That's uh, really good information, I think. <laughs> I think it's a great program. We had a lot of, during the summer especially, we get a lot of dog bite calls. Uh, a lot of stray dogs in the, uh, uh, in people's neighborhoods and things like that. And kids, you know, kids are attracted to dogs and they, and they approach. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with loving a dog. You know, it's just that you gotta be careful, you know? And if it's a stray, you should really get your parents involved and let them check on it. And my guess is most likely parents are gonna tell the kids, stay away. And then what the parents can do is they can call the police department if there's a stray animal in their neighborhood. And then let the officers that, um, I think our community, community service officers will take care of that situation. Right. Yeah, I think a lot of times dogs are frightened because they never saw this person before and you know. <laughs> well yeah, I mean, think about it. They're just like people. I mean, a stray animal, if you, if you think about it, stray, and then you think about stranger. Yeah. You know, so I tell the kids, I say, what's a stranger? It's a person you don't know. Mm -hmm. So what's a stray dog? It's a dog you don't know. Yeah. So you don't approach dogs you don't know because you don't know how they're feeling that day. And you know, you just don't want to do that. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Anything you want to add? No, just have a wonderful day. The weather's going to get warm eventually, so we'll, we'll see you out uh, in the public, probably at the parks coming up. Hi, we're at the Women's and Children's Horizons booth and finding out more about them. Could you tell us about them? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kirsten. I'm the volunteer coordinator for Women and Children's Horizons. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that serves um, survivors of domestic abuse and sexual assault in Kenosha County. Um, we have a thrift shop called Nifty Thrifty, which we're really excited about. It's um, expanding to include furniture as well as the clothing items that we're already providing. But 100% of the proceeds from the thrift shop go back into our organization, which is really important because we have to fund things like the shelter and the services that we offer. Is there anything you want to add about the services that Women's and Children's Horizons offers? Or your website or your contact information? Definitely. Well, our website is wchkenosha.org. Um, a, a lot of things that people don't know about Women and Children's is we have the shelter, but we also have advocates in the courthouse um, to help people fill out restraining orders and to help them with legal services, um, referring them to other outside sources and just kind of being a support and to be there for them during this time of crisis. Yeah. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you, yeah. Okay. Right, now we're learning about Society's Assets. What's your name and could you tell us a little about the organization? Sure, thank you. My name is Donna Manerick and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator at Society's Assets. And today we have our booth set up kind of like Grandma's House because we can help people with disabilities and seniors live independently at home as long as possible. Um, and that might be with caregivers coming in every day to help with um, getting up and getting dressed or meal preparation, doing the shopping, any kinds of chores that might need to be done around the house. Um, and then we also brought a lot of things that focus on vision today. And the vision, um, low vision, people with low vision need um, some extra devices, um, ideas that can help them uh, still see the TV or do the hobbies that they really like to do or read a book. Um, all those kinds of things are what we have featured today. So do you have a website or Facebook page or something? Um, we have both. We have a Facebook page, Society's Assets. You'll find us there. Please like us on Facebook. We also have a website, and that's our name as well. That's www.societiesassets.org. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for stopping. And now we're finding out about the Community Impact Organization. Could you tell me your name and a little bit about the Community Impact Program? My name is Wendy Chavoris. Um, I've been working with Community Impact Program since August. Um, what we are is a social organization in Kenosha. We provide a lot of services, um, one of them being foster parent recruiting. We also do the licensing for them in Kenosha County as well. Okay, and how does that, could you tell us about how that works? <laughs> well, one of the first processes is doing something right here um, at the expo. We go to different fairs and organizations. Um, first people usually have like an inquiry. They want to like know a little bit more about it. Once that happens, we give them a packet of information that they fill out. Um, we have home visits that we go to where we get a lot of intimate details about the individual's income, um, family size, what activities you know that they do with the kids. Um, we learn more about them as well as their children. And then after that, there's additional visits that go by. We do um, home inspections, background checks to make sure that the kids are going to be safe once they're placed there. Um, the parents have to go through that vigorous process as well. Um, 
Also, they have uh, lots of different trainings that we do. Some of them are done at the Kenosha Job Center, and then we also have some additional trainings that we do there at community impact programs. Do you have any website or Facebook page? Mm -hmm. Um, you can just go on to the website. It's uh, on Facebook, just Community Impact Programs. And then there's also just a, a Kenosha County foster parent. You can go there as well. Thank you for talking to us. You're welcome. Hi, now we're talking to a Boys and Girls Club representative. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your, your name and your organization? Uh, my name is Kathy Holland. I'm the Director of Operations for the Boys and Girls Club of Kenosha. And what does Boys and Girls Club do? Well... We um, work with kids of um, all ages, from ages 6 to 18, and we offer programs so they have things to do after school and weekends and things like that. So we have two drop-in centers, a youth center for 6 to 12 year olds and a teen center for 13 to 18 year olds. So they do a variety of things, but our three priority outcomes our academic success, good character and citizenship, and healthy lifestyle. So that's really what we focus on through everything we do at the club. We also have a huge athletic department that, um, you know, we do sports of all kinds. So we have um, basketball, we have baseball, we have um, soccer, we have um, all different kinds of things that, that we do with kids that also have to do with athletics. So does anybody have to sign up at a particular time of year? Or can you come in any time? You can come in any time and sign up for the Boys and Girls Club. Um, the membership is $20 per year um, for an individual and $30 per year for a family, and kids can come all year. Okay. And do you have a website? We do. It is www.bgckenosha.org. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. The fire department at the expo, so could you talk to us about fires and preventing them a little bit? Uh, fire prevention is always an important thing. Check your uh, smoke detector batteries often, uh, at least twice a year when we do the time change. Like this weekend would be a good time to uh, make sure you have a working smoke detector and uh, the batteries are new and you don't have old batteries in it. We're also here uh, with our EMS side of it. And we have our new, uh, brand new Zoll monitors that we're putting in service. Um, it's a new piece of equipment. They're replacing the older, uh, older monitors that we have, but they're top of the line, state of the art, and we're out here giving free uh, blood pressure and uh, blood sugar checks. Yeah. How many fires have you put out this year? Uh, it's been a busy year. It's been a busy year. I don't have the exact number, but uh, it's always busy. We've, we've uh, since January, it's probably one more of our busier. Uh, busier years. Do you know what the most common reason a fire starts is or anything? Um, there's numerous uh, unattended uh, candles. Uh, people that like candles and you know leave them, walk out of the room, forget to blow them out before they, they go out and uh, leave their house. Uh, smoking materials, careless use of smoking materials too is also another, another big one. And also too in the winter time uh, carbon monoxide is a big big hazard too so everybody should have a carbon monoxide alarm in their carbon monoxide detector in their house. And where do they get those? Uh, you can get those at any uh, home improvement store, hardware store. Uh, they're right, they'll be in the same area with the fire extinguishers and the smoke detectors. Well thank you for talking to us. Do you have a website or anything? Or? Uh, Kenosha, City Kenosha Fire Department has a uh, 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 page, uh, internet page on the city's website you can go to. Hi, we're talking about the Falls Coalition, which I had never heard of. So let's find out a little bit about this. What's your name and tell us about the Falls Coalition. My name is Louise Borst. I'm inpatient pharmacy at Aurora Hospital, but I volunteer for the Kenosha Falls Coalition. It's part of the Aging Disability Resource Center. But what we do is address, we're just an awareness group, a nonprofit that uh, delivers information around the county to help prevent falls. And what we have is a, a lot of resources, presentations. If anyone has a small group that they would like a falls prevention presentation done at, they can contact the ADRC. The phone number is 605-6646. Um, we also have information here on preventing falls, um, safe steps to prevent falls. 
and also if you do fall, how to get up. And then a class that is offered, a six-week falls prevention class, is offered multiple times around the county at many different sites. We have one starting in April. It's, uh, it's a falls prevention class called Stepping On, and it's evidence-based to reduce the risk of falls. By the time someone finishes this class, they have a lower risk of, of, of having a fall. They learn exercises. Um, they have an um, optometrist that comes in one week, a podiatrist that comes in one week, a um, pharmacist that comes in one week, and then they do exercises and other topics. And um, it's an excellent class. If someone cannot get out to the class, they will come into the home, and that's called the Sure Step program. They will do um, a personal falls assessment in the home for someone who's more frail or elderly and can't get out to the class. So there's a lot of information. We're trying to reduce falls in this county. Okay, I've heard that falls are very important to prevent because it, it leads to other things going wrong once uh, somebody falls because elderly people, it takes them longer to heal and everything. It does. Once someone has a hip fracture or you know breaks a bone, and this, it's, it's, it can be a cascade of events that um, leads to them not having as good a quality of life. Yeah, so we definitely want to prevent falls. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, we're finding out about the Kenosha Community Health Center now. Could you tell me your name and about your organization? Yeah, definitely. My name is John Sanson. Uh, I am from the Kenosha Community Health Center. We have three locations. We're on 22nd, 14th Avenue, and the Boys and Girls Club. We offer medical, dental, and behavioral health services. Uh, we work a lot with the uninsured and the underinsured population of Kenosha. Uh, we work based on household income for their sliding scales. We do have the uh, emergency services. It's uh, Monday through Friday at 6.30, so you don't need an appointment for that. I know sometimes things happen and you, you can't afford to go to the emergency room because it is very expensive. You can come to us and uh, we'll try to you know, help with that emergency you're having that morning. So Monday through Friday, 6.30 in the morning. Uh, I think that's a pretty great service that the Kenosha Community Health Center offers. And you have dentists as well as doctors, I heard. Yeah, we have 11 dentists currently. They all work with two assistants and their hygienists. Mm -hmm. And you help people get mammograms for women also. We do, yes. We do. Uh, there is brochures that they give out at the medical location for, uh, for breast cancer exams and, um, you know, just keeping, keeping up with your, with your health. Uh, we have... Um, we do. Uh, oh, we also have certified application counselors at the office, which help apply for, which help patients apply for uh, the Badger Care or the Affordable Care Act uh, the, through the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great information. Do you have a website or Facebook page or something? Yeah, our website is Kenosha, C H C, at dot org dot org. Yeah, so Kenosha C H C dot org, and we also you can check us out on Facebook, Kenosha, the Kenosha Community Health Center. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are at the YMCA booth. Could you tell me a little about that? Uh, yeah, we're just here to share awareness with the city that we're here. Um, we offer lots of programs for seniors, adults, kids. We do before and after school programming, summer day camp. Um, we do have a Facebook page, so like us on Facebook and visit www.kenoshaymca.org for more information. That's just great. <laughs>